Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video I've been meaning to make since Christmas. Um, so sorry it's taken me so long, but here it is. First of all, these are my 15 by 70 binoculars. These binoculars have seen some stuff. <laughs> I won them in a raffle a few years ago at Ford and Bridge Astronomers. These binoculars are made from several other pairs of binoculars that were donated to Steve Tonkin, who is an utter legend within binocular world. So I call them my Frankenbinos, and I actually, he donated them as a raffle prize and I won them. I love them so, so much. And I am so sentimentally attached to them. On just as a side note, last Monday I put these down after getting the position of the comet right to have a quick go at photographing it and one of my cats knocked them on the floor and smashed them into quite a few pieces. I'll insert a picture. Thankfully my husband was able to fix them because I was distraught. Um, the glass is okay, they're still collimated, but anyway, that's not what this video is about. These are heavy binoculars, so to use them, you need to mount them. And when I first got these, the only way that I could mount them was on a camera tripod. And for some circumstances, that works really well. But for a lot of what I do astronomy-wise, that's not the most ideal way to do it. And a lot of people, when I first was sharing pictures of my parallelogram mount, were kind of saying to me, well, what is the benefit of it? Because they are quite expensive to buy. Um, so I figured it'd be easier to actually just show you rather than try to explain. Um, so I'm going to go outside, I'm going to mount these on a camera tripod and show you what it's like and what the pitfalls are. Then I'll show you what it's like to use the parallelogram mount and then I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the whole parallelogram mount. Now Mark Radici, who has featured on my channel before, actually made a video on how he made his parallelogram mount. That is a very slightly different design from what my husband husband Mark made but I'm going to link Mark Radici's video in the description box. My husband wrote a blog on how he wrote um, made my parallelogram mount so I'm also going to link that in the description box as well so hope you enjoy the video so love my Frankenbinos. Let's get started. So if you are observing something that is fairly low then you can set the height of the camera tripod and look through these without too much of a problem. The legs get in the way, so if you're trying to sketch or do anything like that with a clipboard, all of this is kind of in your face. You can obviously put that around the other side, but all of this is in the way. You're kicking the tripod, and then the minute you want to look at anything high up, this is the highest that this particular tripod will go. You have to go like this, and then you're twisting and craning and this is not good ergonomically. Um, this is not good if you have a good spine. My spine is not good. <laughs> this absolutely cripples my neck and my back. And honestly, just trying to sketch anything that is more than kind of this angle up, just impossible. So whenever I do this, I end up with neck spasms that cause migraines. So I have used this method. I've done a lot of sketches here, but unfortunately I can't sketch anything that is at a bigger angle of probably about 35, 40 degrees. So this does work and it, I didn't need to buy anything extra to make this work. So I could use them mounted. This would work no problem for bird watching and stuff like that. However, with a parallelogram mount, things get so much easier. So this is the parallelogram mount. It has a counterweight here. Mark made this so that that weight is in the right place to balance this pair of binoculars, but you can make these with a design where that is movable, so you can use it with different weights of binoculars. This whole thing turns around through 360 degrees. You can also move it up and down like this really smoothly but in addition to that you've still got the tripod ball head here to go up and down and um, side to side so it gives you so much more movement options and also if i'm sketching i can't stand up for very long so i can sit down there's no tripod in the way here i can have my oh need to tighten that up <laughs> I have my pad on my lap or my clipboard. I normally use a smaller chair than this for my observing, 
but basically you can just angle this to fit your eyes and if you want to look at something that's higher just put that up so obviously you still have to tilt your head because you, you, know, you can't change how the body works but this just gives you so much more comfort now obviously if you have angled lenses on your binoculars you will find things a lot more easily usable if you're using a camera tripod i don't have those they are incredibly expensive and they are worthwhile investing in if you have them um, but i don't have them so this makes life a lot easier for me so this is great um, so yeah it's so much more comfortable i can also set this up pointed at something, get my husband to come and sit in the chair and he can look through and see the same object without having to mess around with heights and stuff like that. So it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. So you can move it around, up and down, smoothly, balances well. It's just incredible. Makes life so much easier, so much more comfortable. Um, the only sketch I've done so far is of um, the Comet ZTF that has been visible recently, or the rare green comet as the press have been calling it, but I'm looking forward to doing way more sketches when it's a bit warmer and I'm more comfortable sitting outside for long periods. I love this so much, I really do. I am so grateful for this. Um, these are super expensive to buy, but Mark made this for me and I just love it so much. So just showing you up close, um, so there are obviously the binoculars. This is the head off a tripod that Mark bought off eBay. So that is basically the whole ball head off a, a, a budget tripod. The rest of it is lumps of wood that we had in the garage from an old piece of furniture that wasn't used anymore. So you have these two sets of parallel planks essentially and a couple of upright pieces then all of the, the wing nuts go in and out. Now my husband has put wing nuts on these so if they loosen up at all in the dark it's super easy to actually tighten them up. And if you're pointing at something particular that you really don't want the mount to move, you can tighten those up and just keep it absolutely sturdy if you want to. If you don't do that, it will move smoothly up and down. Now, as I said, this one is an old counterweight from a, a telescope that we don't use anymore. And this just balances perfectly here. So obviously you have to test this out and see where this weight needs to be to counteract the weight of your own binoculars. Mark Radici's design has a channel cut along here and the counterweight can be moved up or down as I said so if you change it for a lighter pair of binoculars you can move the weight to here if you've got heavy ones you can put it down to here so his is a slightly more complex design um, than this one and the tripod again is one off a of really old telescope it's the one that I think came with Mark's old little four inch reflector that he's had for years so it folds up flat and it's just great so for transportation I tend to take that off and um, that is quite heavy to, to carry so if I'm moving it anywhere other than just out from inside to the patio I take the counterweight off so it just makes it easier to move it and obviously I take the binoculars off before I move it anywhere as well so they look pretty simple in terms of design and there are a few little things that you need to be aware of if you make one of these. So this little bit here was catching on the ball head. So we had to kind of angle that and turn it around just to, to make it more smooth for these to be able to move without hitting the corners. So we're under the flight path for Oxford Airport, so a plane went over. So yeah, when um, we made it the first time, whenever we moved this up, the corners here were hitting the little bit of this tripod head. That's all fixed now. I love this because I can obviously make this higher. You can extend the legs of this and make it so it's tall enough to use standing. But for me, with my back, I like to do my observing sitting down if possible. So I can use my folding observing chair and just sit at the binoculars and be super comfortable. All this space around here is free. So I can put a little table there with all my sketching stuff. I can have a clipboard on my lap and kind of just look up and draw, look up and draw. 
and it's phenomenal so I am so so grateful for this my husband actually wrote a blog so I know I'm going to put Mark Radici's video link in the description box but my husband wrote a written blog on how he made this so I will also link that he's put that on his website so I'll put both of them there I know some people prefer to learn from videos some prefer to read so I'll give you both options and the designs are both slightly different so you'll be able to kind of get a an idea of what design is going to work best for you if you want to make one so that's it really there's nothing more to say other than this is absolutely awesome and I am incredibly grateful for it so thank you Mark for surprising me making this impressive husband skills he works from home full time and I tend to work from home a lot as well so I don't know how he did this without me knowing I had no idea so top husbanding skills from Mark for for that awesome surprise sorry the thud is my cat being an idiot in the background <laughs> hey slinky it was either him or his brother that smashed my binoculars the other night so um yeah <laughs> So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and um, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.